Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the little Citroen DS3. Thank you everybody that got involved in the comment section of the last video. I, I have noticed that videos like this, everybody loves to see us get involved and actually fault find, find the problem in the first video so that everyone knows what we're up against in the next video and have their fingers crossed about it. So we've got that slight issue with a valve. A lot of you in the comments, again, Chris did say he'll make something up for compressed air, liquid, etc., etc., in order to fill that cylinder and hold that valve completely shut while he gets in there. I, I mean, he's either got a tool or he'll make something up. I'm quietly confident we ain't gonna have to have the head off this. Fingers crossed, guys, fingers crossed, because that is, again, another load of work in itself. I'm that confident. I just said to Chris, oh, I am going to shoot straight over to, do you know what, I forgot the name of them, but I'm going to say as soon as I come back. They've got a water pump, cam belt kit, um, cam, followers, lifters, everything is in stock, ready to collect, and it is reasonably priced. And I spoke to them on the phone, they said, we sell so many of these kits, and it's obvious why, and you're all right in the last video. It is only down to lack of maintenance. So I'm going to fly out and grab the bits for it, leave you with Chris. He's going to get cracking and actually try find the right tool and get to the bottom of it while I'm out. This is one of my traditional valve spring compressors. And as you can see, I've removed the end there because that simply bolts on. So my cunning plan, if you like, is to use this, put that in there. Hopefully you can see this. It should sit on the top of the valve there. And that cutaway allows access to the collets. So the plan is to mount a flat bar on there like that. I will probably put four bolts in. Drill a 10 mil hole here. And then with a bolt, press that down to allow access to the top of the valve stem. Fingers crossed it doesn't rip these threads out here. But what we'll also do is we'll remove cylinder three glow plug, put an adapter in there so we can put some compressed air down the cylinder. Because the camshaft is removed, all the valves and all the cylinders are closed. So that means we can rotate the bottom end to wherever we want. So we bring number three up to top dead center or near top dead center. And with the compressed air in the cylinder, hopefully that's enough to hold the valve shut whilst I compress the spring. Normally the spring and the collet retains the valve. So as soon as you pr press that, you do run the risk the collet falling out and the valve dropping so that's why we bring the piston to the top and have the compressed air in there to hold, help hold it and then it's a, a case of either with a little magnet or I always use a screwdriver with a dab of grease on it and you get in there and you can get the collet in or the two halves of the collet in and then uh, let the tension off the spring and that locks it in place so First things first is get this bit of flat bar cut and drilled and bolted on and see if it's going to work. Quite a quick job there. I also off camera made up four of these. Basically a six mil bolt with a head cut off and then I've put four nuts on there. And the reason I've done that is I've spaced all four of these the same, four studs. So they screw in exactly the same amount. And more important, this distance from here to here is the same on each one. And the idea being that when I bolt my tool on, it stays perfectly flat and he's putting strain on all four of those equally because this will be wound down so the pressure will be exerted upwards if that makes sense 
and try and lift that. So that's the reason I, some people might think it's over engineered, but it's just obviously a useful tool that I should be keeping. So I thought may as well spend the extra 10 minutes uh, and do a reasonable job on it. But let's get those studs screwed into the, uh, they're actually the camshaft cap retainers. So um, I shall use those bolt holes, uh, bolt those studs in, and then I'll cut back in with once this is on. And hopefully, it's actually that way round, hopefully this sits perfectly square on top of that valve washer and we can wind that down as uh, previously said. But let's get it on there and see how it looks. have the tool fitted in place and I've just put that light on now and I have actually wound a little bit down on that and I'm not sure whether this is going to show or not but you can see that is starting to reveal the top of the valve stem so I won't do any more now I've kind of proved that the tool's going to work that's sitting on there really nice and um, that's going to give you as much access as you're ever going to get to the collets. So it's just a case of getting that um, glow plug out of there and making an adapter for that. But we are nearly ready to, uh, to have a go. Luckily we've got a couple of uh, scrap cylinder heads so I've got plenty of collets spare. So I will remove those ready um, because as soon as that's wound down I want to get the new ones in and get the tension back off of that as quick as possible. But uh, let's get see if we can get that glow plug out. This is one of the scrap engines we have in one of my containers and I've just removed the glow plug from there. So a very, very small diameter as you can see. Now I haven't filmed this on camera but I have done it today. Or as they say on Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. What I've done is I've cut that part of the glow plug. So I've cut through here where this green marker is and I've cut through the stem there, which allowed the inner core to fall out. I've drilled it out at 5.2 mil and tapped it at six mil. And then I've run a die nut down the end of the Schrader valve at six mil and screwed the two together and that I'm doing it on this engine because it's a lot easier to kind of feel. That should screw in there. And then I can put the little, I can do either, I can put the airline on there or I'll probably put, I've got a little Makita compressor which has got a, a pressure gauge on it so I'll probably use that. I'm, pump it up and with the Schrader valve there once we remove the um, the compressor it'll, it should hold the air if the thread seals but I think that will I think that will work I've done similar before years ago but uh, I couldn't find any of those adapters so I've had to make a new one but hopefully that explains the idea. I just thought I'd show this quickly. This is the engine I've stripped the head off to uh, get a couple of collets for. And this was the engine out of a, uh, a van I repaired years ago that had been through water which was too deep and it drew up water through the air intake into the engine. So what happens is on the downstroke, piston going down there, it draws in air normally and it draws the water in instead. And some of you might not know, but you, you can't compress a fluid where you can compress a gas. So the cylinder fills up with fluid, and then when the piston's on the upstroke, it can't go anywhere. So it causes a hydraulic lock. Or in this case, it's such high pressure that it bursts the cylinder liner. And then what's additionally happened is a bit of that liner has fallen into the cylinder 
and the piston going up and down has hammered it both into the top of the piston and the underside of the cylinder head which uh, I will show in a minute. I've put the cylinder head on the bench in the workshop ready to strip it. But I just thought I'd show that it might be of interest to a few of you. I actually popped out there and picked up a new camshaft, followers, lifters, etc. And I really, enjoy, I actually personally really enjoyed that bit of video and you've just done there, Chris. Good. And pretty Good. impressed with that tool you made It'd up, I must admit. more impressive if it works, <laughs> won't it? <laughs> I must admit, I really actually enjoyed it. I've just sat there and watched it all, but Chris has got a valve in his hand, also a valve spring. Yeah, I've just took these out of that cylinder head that I uh, previously mentioned. And these are the little collets here, yeah. guys, which, I mean, they're in, it's, it's like a hole, but in two Some, halves. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you have to have a bit of grease on there, and this is what we'll be doing, but in situ. So you've got three little rings on the top yeah. of your valve there, and then these have got three little rings inside. Which they're wedge-shaped. So that one goes on two halves. And then this washer goes up. And locks them. And locks them. Yeah. And that's it. That's how it sits in the cylinder head. And what's happened on ours, where that follower has, has jumped. jumped out, yeah. and then the cam's gone round, it's pressed on the side of the... Uh, washer rather than the top of the valve and one of them's so flinged out, out there and one of them's popped out yeah um, and the other one stayed there and when the when the lobe has rotated round it's gone back and locked it but it's when you look at it on the car it's actually sitting there and it's a bit on the skew I can't get one of them off now because I've put the, the grease on there yeah but yeah on another one here it's actually sitting on there and it's slightly on the skew yeah um, so but we've only got to compress that spring down to expose those three grooves and then hopefully we can stick some grease on and chuck two new ones in it. Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, worst case scenario, if this is damaged and it won't grip in there, it's head off. Head off, yeah, and, and a new valve. valve which yeah. is a shame, but it's worth the, uh, as we know that it's the lobes on the cam that normally rotate, yeah. it doesn't damage these. It, it's well worth trying with the head on isn't it? We can only try and make, let's do it. Bit of persistence there. Oh, do you know? Fiddly, do you know it? what? We're going to leave all of that time lapse in. But well done again. He's done it, guys. That little tool has saved the day. But it was so awkward. In the end, Chris had to get a little flat ended behind the spring and just bring it this way slightly in order for that to seat. But it's seated in now. We've wound it up, and it's actually. Shall I get this off? Yeah, get it, it off, and then we'll have a, a proper look. Yeah. I've got these microphones in, hopefully. I think half the trouble was all our screwdrivers are magnetic. Yeah, that did put a bit of a, a pain yeah. there, didn't it? So, but the airline worked lovely. Really, really good, that worked. Yeah. And there was no, nothing leaking by either, no, so we definitely really, ain't got no bent no, valve there. No, it's uh, quite promising that, isn't it? I'll stay. Bent I'll me tall a little bit in the pressure. Well, when you re engineer that, you'll have well, to make one slightly right. thicker. That's right. We're there. Let's have a proper look. So I'll just wipe that. Yeah. What you can do, spray it up. Could do, can I? Yeah. You might show it a bit, a bit clearer. And there you go. She's back in. Now with two collets in it. And all of the others Chris has inspected and they're all absolutely fine. Yeah. I've got a nice new camshaft for it, water pump, um, tensioners, everything's there, the whole new kit. So I think I mean, the only thing we're missing is a sump gasket, isn't it? Yes. I don't even know if it's got one to be honest, so, Chris. We're gonna have to take that off, aren't Definitely. We? And if you look down there. Let you me, can just see let me, other roller. Let me zoom this in as far as I can. I if it, with that extra light, can you see? Are you on that? And there. Let's have a look. We've got to get out. 
Yeah, I'll I don't give, think you can see it. Give us that torch, mate. You got it? Nah, you, you can't. Yeah, you yeah can there it is. The there, yeah. you? Point at it with uh, the screwdriver. Uh, where's the, where, where are we, Rob? If you go straight down into the hole, that's it. So, can you just, see? Just there. See that there, guys? That's, that's the other the edge, roller. Yeah. There. So, we get that out, and then we can carry on and actually rebuild this one. But it's become dusk already. We're not going to sit here and film us fiddling around trying to get that out but we're definitely going to get that out before we go home it sounded like you had it on the move there as well yeah. we'll get that out and then in the morning i can start hopefully it's a nice day because you started tipping it down halfway through doing this hopefully it's a nice day and we can get this one back together we did there just time lapse just stripping the rest of it pour away eh? pour away oh there's a uh, lots of little lumps in that chris there's lots of lumps i think them roll oh, look. there's all your roll pins needle rollers needle yeah. rollers yeah. see them guys yeah that's well, grab a couple. yeah that's nice to see oh i've got no gloves on but no, leave them on there that's all right we can I think everyone gets the gist. Don't um, you? I think it was during oil change, but very sludgy. It is it? very sludgy. I think what we do is we take the oil pick up, pick up off. Definitely. Give it a wash out as well. One hundred percent. Wash this out. So I want to see how much debris laying in the bottom of that. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot. <laughs> but really, we want to find that collet. Hopefully, there's a bit of a rocker there. So there is. I think we'll just let that drain and we'll get all, all that out, won't we? Yeah, there's a lot in the bottom. Oh my God, yeah. look. Bring it out a little bit more, Chris. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. That's nice to see. That is very, very nice to see that it has all gone through them galleries. You did say them galleries were really, yeah, really big. Galleries yeah, the big, yeah. Yeah, we wash all that out and cut back. Yeah, and have a look, yeah. There's the centre of that uh, other roller there. And that's the one that last night we was trying to get out and is. you pushed it down. Yeah, yeah, nice to see. Very, very nice to see. I didn't see the collet yet, but we'll uh, we'll wash that out and have a look, shall we? Definitely. Chris just asked me to run and get him a bottle of brake cleaner and he said we don't want to leave it because we want to show everything that's... There it is. Yeah, that's it. So hopefully you guys, can you see that there is the missing collet? And there's actually two other halves of a rocker in there. Yeah, and the centre. And the centre. And loads of needle rollers. So, yeah. That's really, really good. That is all of the rockers. Yeah, the, accounted for. Yeah, everything's accounted for. Obviously, not the needle pins. We so haven't them. We haven't. We'll need to go through and just clean yeah. that sump out. Yeah, we'll wash all the underside. We'll take the oil pick up off. I'll carry on, get that done yeah, now yeah. while you're giving that I'm a clean out. This, yeah. And, and then we'll wash, wash the underside of the block as well. Definitely. You've got that drain tray, haven't we? Yeah. We can't really do any more. Nah, it? mate, we can. Let's get straight on with it. I'll let you do that. I'll do this. Let's get it done. Well, after probably an hour of fishing there and cleaning, one, two, three, four, five, both bits that are broken off of it, six, with both bits that are broken off it. Seven and eight with all of the parts that are broken off. And also you've managed to find the collet yep. and loads and loads of little needle rollers. Isn't it funny how it pinged that out? Well, I think like we said, it pinged it out because when one of these is um, broken and come out of place, it's pushed the washer, not the top of the valve. Yeah. When it's pushed the washer skew, obviously there's been enough for that to ping out. That's all I can presume. I've just noticed that other roller's missing. That is in that tray. Was it gone? The we did. Tray. Yeah, you did find it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, definitely was, found yeah, it. Absolutely. And Chris has made this look like new. It's cleaned all of the oil pickup out. 
you can see inside there now, clear as anything if you blew down there. And also inside that sump, that was quite sludgy and horrible. And Chris just actually said to me, right, let's get on, get all this put back together and see see if this car runs but we just had some good news yeah. we have won another custom seizure and they have literally just sent me the authorization to go and collect that vehicle so this is i'm afraid gonna have to be it for today's video we will be staying on it chris will be staying on it now but i do need to go and collect this car otherwise we have to pay 30 pound a day storage or something like that so yeah, that is going to be the end of today's video. We think that we've saved this engine, so fingers crossed, yeah. put that back together, and it should be absolutely fine. As usual, if you did enjoy it, it is something a little bit different, and we notice people like the mechanical stuff, really enjoy it, especially when you're explaining it, and that tool you made up. Yeah. I didn't even mention that yesterday. Me with the airline as well, on the back of that oh, yeah. Yeah. little valve, yeah. was absolutely incredible. So there was, that. Yeah, there was nothing coming out of there at all. Yeah, we'll keep that. The trouble is we've told everyone how to fix them now. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Give the video a thumbs up. Follow us on Instagram, Selvage Rebuilds, and Selvage Rebuilds Chris. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.